Greetings. On the south side of the Snake River, opposite of Celebration Park's Guffey Bridge, you'll find Guffey Butte. Uh, two days prior, a friend and I circumnavigated Guffey Table, so to me, it just seemed right to complete the whole Guffey package before moving on to something else. To the Buttes east is the much larger aforementioned Guffey Table, and to the south and west, more desert plain below. The actual Butte itself sits behind some eye-catching volcanic features. And the Butte is higher than the Table, but it doesn't extend as far north and south. Uh, also, there's something akin to a geocache on the Butte's southern rim. I discovered it last summer purely by chance. Uh, and late last year, I policed up some of the litter, replaced the wind-torn flag, left a bigger box, and a notebook. All the older stuff I left secured up there for the owner to collect at their convenience, and they did that. Also indicating that the iteration I left was the 3.0. So I suspect it's become a sort of community project that's taken on a life of its own. If you do go up there, leave a message in the notebook and some trinket or another in the box. It's fun to see what others have left, read their messages, and honestly, you'll find that people from all over the country have been up on Guffey Butte. But don't think that the place is busy. It's, it's not a busy place, especially on a cloudy, cold day. I was the only person out there climbing around the rocks and walking around the desert. Uh, there was a time when I believed that Guffey's volcanism had occurred 12 million years ago and that it was some super volcano type thing that laid waste to the central part of the continent. Uh, the reality is I discovered that its volcanism occurred only a million years ago and it was by no means a super volcano. So one of the questions I've asked myself is, why do I go out to these places? And over the past year, I've come up with several answers. Uh, that first, uh, there are times in which I enjoy complete solitude. I've stood alone in the middle of literally the proverbial nowhere, out of sight and sound of everything civilization. And no power lines, no street lights, no buildings, no roads, no vehicles of any kind, no airplanes. And I'll admit it, when I'm out there, I am a little bit lonely. Uh, but in a weird way, I'm also not alone. There's, I sense something out there, but I don't believe it can ever be truly understood. I I think what happens to me out there is something old and instinctual. It comes to the surface when there's no modernity around. It's, it's something hardwired within my DNA. Is it me or is it external or is it both? I, I'm not sure. And, and I'm curious to explore whatever that is, even if only for a few hours uh, at a time or a few days at a time. Um, you know... Another consideration is that we sense time by the minute, by the hour, by the day. How we think of time, how we feel and, and move through time is, is kind of on a, well, it certainly is on a human scale, not kind of, it is on a human scale. But, but when I'm out in the wilds, far from civilization, I get a sense that the natural world measures time <laughs> by the century and the millennium and by millions of years. And that we are just little specks in the big scheme of things. And it's, it's like we're spastic rodents and we're operating at a much higher level of intensity than the geologic rhythm of the planet. It's, it's kind of weird. I realize that we're living things and the planet is not a living thing. It's just a natural process. But I'm just saying, all right, that, that's, that, that contrast comes to mind. And it's very humbling. And it creates a, for me at least, a tremendous sense of gratitude that I'm alive. Uh, it's you know it's a privilege to breathe and to laugh and to and to walk around and to see things. Just 
the perspective changes values. And I think when you get away from the uh, hyperness of modernity, your values are going to change into something more uh, simple. And I think more valid as well. Anyhow, hard to express. Uh, those are two things that uh, I get from getting out there in those wild areas. <clears throat> and before I go, I'd like to dedicate this video to Ann, who is someone I dearly love. Uh, she has the heart of an adventurer, and she's as patient as a saint. Until then, be kind to others and be kind to yourself. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.